Hi, I'm Emily, and this is my story. If you enjoy tales of family drama and unexpected twists, don't forget to subscribe for more. Here's where it all begins. At 17, life seemed complicated enough, but the curveballs just kept coming. Our family had just moved into a new house. A fresh start, or so it seemed. But then, Dana, my half-sister, crashed back into our lives like a storm. Fresh out of college, jobless, and dealing with a boatload of emotional baggage, she moved back in with us. Despite my protests, I was forced to share my room with her. Our parents thought it would bring us closer, but it was a disaster from the start. Dana has always been the wild card, impulsive, a little reckless, and I'll admit, sometimes downright selfish. Losing her mom at a young age hit her hard, and I guess she never really got over it. But understanding her pain didn't make living with her any easier. Our room, my sanctuary, turned into a war zone of clashing personalities and invading messes. Just keep your stuff on your side, I pleaded one evening as I tripped over a pile of her laundry. Chill out, Emily. It's just some clothes, Dana replied, rolling her eyes as she flicked through her phone. But it wasn't just clothes. It was my space, my order being upturned. And as if the encroachment wasn't enough, Dana began crossing another line, tampering with my belongings. One afternoon, I came back from a friend's house to find my wardrobe flung wide open, clothes strewn all over the floor. My heart sank as I picked up a ripped sleeve of my favorite dress, a dress I had saved for months to buy. Dana, why were you messing with my stuff? Oh, that? I just tried it on. Didn't fit. My bad. Her nonchalance lit a fire in me. This isn't just about a dress, Dana. You can't just disrespect my things because you're having a tough time. Our voices echoed through the halls, attracting our parents' attention. Dad rushed in, his face a mix of frustration and concern. Emily, why can't you just be more understanding? Dana's having a hard time. A hard time? Dad, this is about respect. It's about my space, I shot back. But it felt like my feelings were just whispers in a storm. Dana scoffed. Grow up, Emily. Stop being so dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. You are completely out of line. Mom tried to mediate, her voice calm but firm. Let's all just take a breath, okay? We can replace the clothes. It's not about the clothes, Mom. It's about her attitude and lack of respect for anyone but herself. The room fell silent for a moment, the tension palpable. Then, Dana laughed, a harsh sound that made my skin crawl. You think you're so perfect, don't you? Just because you're the real daughter. That's enough, Dad's voice boomed more in control now. Emily, go to your room. We'll talk about this later. But, no buts. Go. That night, alone in the wreckage of what used to be my retreat, I felt the walls of family loyalty crumbling. It was clear I was on my own in this. With nowhere else to turn, I took to social media, not to air dirty laundry, but to seek understanding from anyone who might listen. Little did I know, that post would change everything. Typing through tears, I poured out my frustration in a post that I hoped would at least garner some sympathy from friends. The next morning, my phone was buzzing nonstop. The post had gone viral. Comments ranged from supportive to outraged, and it wasn't long before the story picked up traction beyond my circle. This is what I'm dealing with at home, I texted my best friend, along with a screenshot of the post. It's crazy. It's super messed up. Do your parents even see what's happening? Her reply came quick. They don't see anything past Dana's needs. As the day progressed, the online outrage grew. People shared similar stories, offering advice and solidarity. But with the support came unexpected backlash. Emily, what have you done? Dad's voice was low, laced with disbelief as he confronted me later that day. I just told the truth, Dad. The truth you and Mom won't see. You've aired our dirty laundry for the whole world to see. This isn't just about you. It never was just about me. That's the point. The conversation spun in circles, with Dad unable to grasp the full impact of Dana's actions on me. Meanwhile, the post continued to spread, eventually reaching family friends and relatives who began calling, each with their own opinions on our family drama. As the sun set, I realized that my outburst on social media had set something irreversible in motion. There was no taking it back, no unspoken words. Our family was exposed, vulnerable, and I couldn't help but feel a twinge of regret amidst the justified anger. 
The reckoning was only just beginning. Everyone's talking about Dana's behavior online. The voices of our parents rose from the kitchen, reaching me upstairs. Curiosity peaked. I crept down, leaning against the hallway to eavesdrop. It's not just about the post, John. It's about how we've been handling things. We've been ignoring Emily's feelings. Mom's voice broke through, more assertive than I'd heard in years. Dana needs us more, Dad argued, his tone defensive. You know how hard things have been for her since... Since her mom died, I know. But Emily is our daughter too. And this house... Mom paused, her voice steadying with resolve. This house is in my name. We need to start setting some boundaries for Dana. That revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. The house was in Mom's name? I stepped into the kitchen, surprising them. This house is yours, Mom? Yes, Emily. It's something I've kept to myself. A safety net of sorts. Well, maybe it's time we use that net for some real changes, I suggested, hoping the newfound leverage would embolden her further. Dana, hearing the commotion, stormed into the kitchen. What changes? This is just as much my home. It's actually not, Dana. Mom corrected her gently but firmly. And Emily has a point. Things can't go on like this. The discussion turned heated as Dana tried to defend her actions, but the dynamics had shifted. Mom proposed family therapy something we had never considered before. You both need to be heard, and clearly we haven't managed that on our own, Mom insisted. And Dana, you might find it useful to talk to someone professional about everything, Mom added, looking pointedly at her. Fine, whatever. But I'm not doing it for Emily. I'm doing it for me, Dana huffed, her defense crumbling under the weight of her own frustrations. As arrangements were made, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of relief and apprehension. Therapy was a step forward, a way to mend the cracks in our family's foundation. But it was also uncharted territory, and there was no telling what truths would surface. The first session was awkward. We sat in a semicircle, each of us fidgeting under the therapist's observant gaze. So why don't we start with you, Emily? Tell me, how do you feel living in the same house with Dana? I took a deep breath, my heart racing. It's been hard. I feel like I'm always second best, always the one who has to adjust. The therapist nodded, turning to Dana. And how does that make you feel, hearing Emily say that? Dana squirmed, her facade of indifference cracking. I, I don't know, guilty, I guess, but she doesn't know what it's like. Let's not compare struggles, Dana. Let's address them, the therapist interjected smoothly. As the session unfolded, walls slowly came down. We confronted our grievances, our pains, and the stark inequalities in how we were treated. It was painful, but necessary, peeling away the layers of resentment that had built up over years. Leaving the therapist's office, I felt a slight shift in the air between us. Dana was quiet, contemplative even. Maybe, just maybe, this was the start of something new. Or maybe it was the calm before another storm. Either way, I was ready. As we prepared for another therapy session, Mom addressing Dad, her voice was calm but firm. You've been enabling her behavior for too long. I was just trying to make her feel part of the family. Dad defended himself, his voice tinged with regret. But at my expense, I couldn't help but interject. The truth needed to be aired, no matter how uncomfortable. It wasn't intentional, Emily. I just... I didn't see, Dad admitted, the weariness evident in his eyes. During the therapy session, the therapist encouraged us to express our thoughts through structured activities. We were each asked to write down our feelings and then share them aloud. I feel overlooked, I read from my slip of paper, my voice steady, like I have to compete for my parents' attention. Dana rolled her eyes but kept silent, her usual retort subdued by the formal setting. And I feel like I'm always the outsider, Dana finally spoke, her voice low. Like no matter what I do, it's never good enough for anyone. Mom and Dad listened, their faces reflecting a mixture of sadness and realization. This isn't a competition, girls. It's about understanding and supporting each other, the therapist interjected, guiding the conversation back to constructive paths. Post-session, Dad pulled me aside. I'm sorry, Emily. I've been so focused on Dana, I didn't see how it was affecting you. It's not just about me feeling bad, Dad. It's about how we all need to change, I said, hoping he truly understood this time. As we continued with therapy, Dana's demeanor began to change. She was less defensive, 
more open to discussing her feelings. It was during one of these sessions that she broke down. I just miss her so much, Dana sobbed, referring to her mother. And I've been taking it out on everyone else. It's okay to miss her, Dana. Mom reached out, her touch gentle. But it's not okay to hurt others because you're hurting. The breakthrough was significant. Dad, seeing the raw emotions, finally understood the depth of Dana's pain and how his actions had inadvertently deepened the divide between us. I promise, things are going to change, Dad declared as we ended the session, a new resolve in his voice. And change they did. Dad started spending more one-on-one -on -one time with me, making up for the years of neglect. Dana and I began to find a tentative peace, a mutual understanding that was cautious but real. We should have done this years ago, Mom commented one evening at dinner, a smile touching her lips as she watched Dana and me talking without the usual tension. Better late than never, I replied, a lightness in my chest that had been absent for too long. As we cleared the dishes, Dana lingered behind, helping me without being asked. I'm sorry for everything, she said quietly, her eyes not meeting mine. It's a start, I acknowledged, allowing a small smile. Let's just take it one day at a time. Nodding, Dana smiled back, a hint of hope flickering between us. As we worked side by side, the distance that had defined our relationship seemed, for the first time, bridgeable. One morning, new beginning on the breakfast table, Dana announced her decision palpable. I think it's time for me to find my own place. Are you sure this is what you want? Mom's voice was tinged with concern, the maternal instinct to keep the nest intact, clashing with the knowledge that sometimes letting go was necessary. Yes, it's for the best. For everyone. As Dana packed her things over the next few days, the atmosphere at home was bittersweet. Boxes piled up in the hallway, each one a testament to the years of shared history and the recent months of strife. Need help with this? I offered one afternoon, gesturing towards a heavy box. Thanks, Emily. I didn't want to ask. You didn't have to. We're still sisters, no matter what. As we lifted the box together, the weight somehow felt lighter than expected. We shared a look, a silent acknowledgement of our rocky past and the uncertain future. The day Dana moved out, Dad helped load the last of her boxes into her car. There was a long hug, a few tears, and then she was gone, off to start her new chapter. Do you think she'll be okay? I watched her car disappear down the street. Dana's stronger than she knows, Dad replied, putting an arm around my shoulders. And so are you, Emily. The following months were indeed a time of healing. Mom and Dad made more of an effort to be present, to really listen to what I had to say. Family dinners were no longer a battleground, but a place for genuine conversation and laughter. I'm proud of you, Emily. You've handled everything with such maturity, Mom said one evening, her smile warm. It wasn't easy, but I learned a lot. About myself. About us. And what's the biggest lesson? Dad looked over, curious that it's okay to stand up for yourself, even if it means upsetting the balance. Sometimes, that's how you find the real equilibrium. Nods of agreement came from both parents, a silent recognition of the shifts we had all made. As winter turned to spring, I took to spending more time in the garden, a hobby Dana and I shared in our better moments. The act of planting, of nurturing something from the soil, seemed a fitting metaphor for our family's journey. One afternoon, as I was pruning some overgrown bushes, my phone buzzed with a text from Dana. Hey, can we talk sometime? I've been thinking a lot about everything. And typed back. Of course. Whenever you're ready. As I returned to my gardening, a sense of peace settled over me. The garden was blooming, vibrant with colors and life, a stark contrast to the barrenness of months past. It was a visual reminder of growth, of the possibility of renewal after even the harshest of winters. Our family, like the garden, was not perfect, but it was alive, it was growing, and most importantly, it was healing. Through this ordeal, I had found my voice, my strength, and perhaps most surprisingly, a deeper connection with the very people I had once thought I needed to protect myself against. And that brings us to the end of our story. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Do you think it's possible to fully rebuild trust and mend relationships after such deep family conflicts? Or are some rifts too difficult to heal? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content.
Your support helps us keep these stories coming.